All right, welcome everyone to the Foot Notable live stream here on our Facebook page. We thank you so much for joining us. We're going to finish getting some things set up here, do a quick audio test, and then we're going to be jumping into today's yeah. episode. Welcome everyone. Glad you joined us. Like and share and tell all your friends and family and coworkers and even your enemies. We like them too. Yes, especially tell your enemies. Yeah. Because if there's anything you want to do to get back at them, recommending our podcast That's right. is definitely something you either, could do. It'll help them become your friend or it'll torture them to no end. So yeah. either way, we win and you win. In truth, though, this is a great way to love your enemies. It is. Absolutely. I agree. The microphones keep getting put back, Dave. It's it's that other the other podcast sus. that's in here. Yeah. Why can't they leave it like it is? Yeah, and they would just put technology in front of us. Why can't they just leave it? You know who you are. Yeah. I wait. Wrestling with the angels. You know who you are. Leave our microphones alone. There's more volume, man. A little quiet over here. There we go. All right. We're good. We're good on Facebook. So Facebook crowd, make sure you uh, hit that share button on the video. And share it to all the groups you're in and the people you know. I love it. Just tell them. And if you're watching this on YouTube after we've posted it there, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell. Mm -hmm. Let's like a, think of it like a church bell. Just yep. give it a little ring -a ding ding and that way you'll always know when we post new videos there. All right. So I think we're all set over here. Ready to go. Ready? Y'all so, ready? Are y'all ready? All right. So we'll do a quick introduction to our, our live audience. We're talking about yes. Gen Z. Gen Z. Today. And uh, that is a generation that is not Orin and I. No. May not be you either, but it's an important generation. We're going to talk about it. So as always, if you have questions about the topic or if things come up during our discussion, you want to interact with us while we're live, please go ahead and do so. Yes. Drop it in the comments. Uh, we do check that out, and we're happy to answer your questions throughout the episode. Absolutely. We'd Speaking love to. Speaking of episode, are we ready to actually, for real, get this one rolling? Let's drop the beats, Dave. All right, here we go. This is David Rhymes, and you're listening to Foot Notable, a podcast where we discover the truth is in the details. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back to this week's episode of Foot Notable. Or and I are here to tackle yet another topic. Pressing, important topic in which we'll talk a lot about and only scratch the surface. That's right. Yeah, scratching the surface is what Foot Notable does. That's exactly best. right. We dive into the details, but not that not, far. Not too deep, that's correct. Yeah, that's, that's why correct. we're only a footnote. There's only so much time. That's exactly for right. that deep dive. So, yep. yep. So, uh, so we're talking about Gen Z and Gen Z. Uh, we'll talk about in, in a moment more in detail, like we said before. But uh, this is the youngest named generation, and this is our children, Dave and I's children. Maybe your children or yeah. grandchildren. And so, there's a lot of important stuff to talk about. Um, bridging the generations can be difficult. I think Dave, we are Gen Xers. Maybe we'll, we'll, we talked earlier today about. Spending an episode talking about Gen X, and we'll brag on ourselves and how awesome we are. And yes, we need a whole episode because we have some Gen X friends and listeners, us. and and I'm sure they like to talk to us to talk about them as well. But, but uh, as Gen Xers, we are a bit of a bridge between um, boomers and builders to the the millennials and the. You're welcome, millennials that's exactly and Gen right. Zs. That's right. If it weren't for us, you would just be in. It would be this in a, 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 a giant cultural abyss. war. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yeah. would every every other word out of your mouth would be okay, boomer. That's right. And you it would kind of is have, already. You know, <laughs> in some cases, <laughs> but because because they can't say okay, Gen Xer, because that's right. We're too cool for that. Right. right. So exactly. so so uh, bridging the gap between generations can be difficult. And look, we all understand this, right? Uh, some of you listening to us and watching us online. Uh, those of you listen to this podcast, you may be of an older generation than even mine and Dave, and you remember the most likely you are. Yeah, most if likely you're listening to this that's podcast. Our, that's a key demographic, but um, 
you remember as a young person, a teenager, young adult, and the difference between you and older generations before you, your parents and your grandparents, you noticed that there were some very distinct differences. But I would wager to, to bet that the differences between your generation and those before you were less uh, broad and distinct that uh, compared to what we're seeing now between Gen Z and millennials, and especially Gen Z and Gen Xers are, are their, are their uh, older parents, the boomers. And so we're going to be talking about some of that today. And to segue into our discussion, we're going to use Seinfeld. This may come as a shock to some of you. Yeah. But if you're a first time listener and you've jumped in at this particular episode, welcome to the Seinfeld reference yeah. zone. <laughs> That's right. Part about being a Gen Xer means that our favorite sitcom, as God intended, is Seinfeld. Is Seinfeld. That's right. And That's so right. we make references every week yep. to our, our favorite and the best. Without fail. Without fail. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't reused one yet. We've never duplicated yeah. uh, one one reference Not yet. Not yet. Eventually, we probably will. We'll double up on some. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. some are just so good, and they have a multi-purpose. Yeah. Uh, yep. And so it's like, it's like an onion. You, know, you put back the layers. Peeling, baby. Just keep peeling. It's That's there. Right. And so there's a reference we want to use today of, um, in, interestingly, in the Seinfeld episodes, there's not a lot of references from Jerry and his friends generation uh, having trouble with the younger ones. But there's a lot of references making that distinction between Jerry and his friends with the older generation, like their parents or even their grandparents. Correct. And so uh, we have a clip for you today. Dave, why don't you introduce the clip for us? Yeah, so basically, if you're familiar with the show, you know that Jerry's mom and dad retired, left New York, mm -hmm. and went down to sunny Florida like a lot of retirees do, or at least that's what we're told. I know there's a lot of retirees down there. Yeah, it's exactly. kind of a stereotypical yeah. thing. You retire to the sunny Florida. Well, they did. And Jerry went to go visit them on one particular occasion because mm -hmm. he's a good son. Mm -hmm. And it came time to eat dinner. Yeah. Well, at least according to Jerry's parents. Exactly. So let's listen to this little exchange between the generations here on Seinfeld. All right. Are you ready to eat? All right. Let's go. Jerry, let's go. It's time to eat. We're going to dinner. Dinner? Well, what time is it? It's 4.30. 4.30? Who eats dinner at 4.30? By the time you sit down, it'll be quarter to five. <laughs> I, I don't understand why we have to eat now. We gotta catch the early bird. It's only between 4.30 and 6. Yeah, they give you a tenderloin, a salad, and a baked potato for 4 95 You know what that costs you after 6? <laughs> Can't we eat at a decent hour? I'll treat, okay? You're not buying us dinner. I'm not force feeding myself a steak at 4.30 to save a couple bucks, I'll tell you that. All right. We'll wait. But it's unheard of. It's unheard of. It's unheard of, everyone. <laughs> Oop, I grabbed the wrong slider there. Yeah, it's unheard of. Oh, my goodness. The so generation gap there so Jerry's played parents, out on Seinfeld. Jerry's parents want to eat dinner. <laughs> at 4 30 and dave and i are laughing because we don't eat dinner at 4 30 no uh and jerry wants to eat obviously later his parents want to eat early to get the early bird special right which is probably a couple of bucks if you really think about the the difference in the price but that is a, a glimpse into a very generational mindset jerry seinfeld eats dinner six seven eight o'clock his parents eat dinner at four 30 to 5 o'clock in right. the afternoon. He, they're, they eat dinner at snack time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we eat a snack at 4.30. We eat dinner a little bit later in the day. And so that's that's a simple way of, of illustrating that uh, we think about things very differently than the generations in front of us and behind us, right? And the reality is, uh, uh, I've often used this illustration before, when we, when, we, when we reference younger generations, we usually don't reference them favorably. Um, right. For instance, we talk about the greatest generation in American history, what we call the builder generation. We'll talk about the, them a little bit more in a minute. Those that, that won a war and they came back from a war, or two fronts in World War II, and they built a country. And America was the, was, the, was the most powerful nation in the world. And not all that is very true. But I've often said, you know who didn't think those people were the great, the, the, the greatest? Their parents and grandparents probably knew them as children going oh you kids you don't know what it's like that's right you don't know what it's like to be to world fight world war one you don't know what it's like to fight the american revolution you don't know what i mean like like 
they were referencing their parents and grandparents and it's it's like the next generation just doesn't going to live up to our standards yeah. right every and, generation does this to some extent and so so in some ways jerry's mom's comment it's unheard of applies to more than just dinner at 4 30 or eating dinner at six instead of 4 30. there's a lot of things that we may uh look at in younger generations in particular gen z and think well that's unheard of but it's not to them that's normal for them. And so our responsibility when we start talking about generational divides and how we do ministry and how we love one another through that, it's really important for us to try to understand where they're coming from and then to communicate well where we're coming from so there can be some actual communication and understanding between generations. My children are Gen Z. Dave, your girls are Gen Z. That's correct. And so this is a relevant conversation for he and I, for sure. So if you are a, a young baby boomer or a, a, a Gen Xer, it's likely that you have Gen Z children. And uh, this, co this conversation is important. Or you might have Gen Z grandchildren. And it's important to understand where they're coming from and why it is how it is with them. You can look at it and go, well, that, that, that's unheard of. It doesn't matter. But the truth is, when you begin to understand why they think the way they do, why they do what they do, well, now you can build significant relationships that, that withstand all the tension that's created between generations because we just don't do things the same way. I thought of a story that I heard once. You heard about the, the, the ham in the pan? Have you heard this story before? I don't know if Where I have. A young couple. Oh, you know It's their what? first I, actually, Easter together. I do know the story. Their first Easter together. Yes. The husband walks into the kitchen. His wife is cutting the ends off of a, of a ham. And he's like, why would you just take cut the ends off that ham? And she says, I don't know. That's what my mom always did it. Mm -hmm. And so she, he, he, he calls her mom and says, hey, why, why, why do you cut the ends off the ham? And she said, I don't know. That's the way my mom always did it. That's right. So they called the grandmother and asked the grandmother, why would you cut the ends off the ham? She said, so it could fit in the pan, right? There was a practical reason why she did it. Things kept going beyond that, and no one really knew yeah. why. A lot of millennials, but especially Gen Zers, are asking a lot of why right now. Lots of why. And they want to know, why do you do that? Because I'm not sure I want to do it that mm -hmm. way. And every generation does this to some degree. It's exponentially greater in the age we're living in now. Yes. So Gen Z is very important for us to talk about. That's why we're actually going to take uh, three episodes, this mm -hmm. one and two more, yeah. because we really want to introduce to you in this episode who Gen Z is. Yes. And then we want to start taking a deeper dive into their world, mm -hmm. uh, into how they perceive things, their worldview, what's changed for them that's radically different than previous generations. And so we're going to just be kind of doing a little bit of um, exposition, I guess you would say, mm -hmm. in this episode, mm -hmm. because you throw around generation titles, and sometimes people go, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. What generation am, am I? Right. And so we just want to make sure we explain when you hear Gen Z, who they are, and what the context is, mm -hmm. where this generation fits. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't, exp it doesn't give a description for everyone who's under a certain age right so it's actually it actually does stop and then you have the, your youngest kids mm -hmm. who have yet to be labeled yeah okay so we want to be real specific make sure we're all we're kind of putting th some definitions out there getting everyone on the same page mm -hmm. absolutely so, so let's let's do some uh some 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 defining here yeah and look these are not our categories uh, we don't break generations down for a living. We just use other people's information. If we were breaking generations it down, it would be something like Mandelbaum for builders. <laughs> we probably would put like, you know, uh, Leo, Uncle Leo for boomers. We get Jerry in there for Gen X. Um, Linus and Gen Z, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah they, they weren't even around. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly right. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe the kid, millennials would be the kid that um, got Jerry in, in trouble for repeating a dirty word. Oh, that that's he said. right. Is you it, that kid's is, name is that, was. Is that on the yogurt, the fat-free yogurt shop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that kid, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yep. Yeah, so so we use a lot of uh, Barner research. Barner has been really great for the church to give us um, some really good research to help us understand kind of what the culture is like and what we're dealing with in our context. And Barna has these generations broken down by sort of years that you were born. Now, these are not hard and fast rules. So, for instance, we talk about the builder generation was born before 1945. So up to 1945. 
1944, anyone that's still living that was born before 1944 or earlier was considered part of the builder generation. But someone might ask, well, what if I was born in 1944? Which one am I? Well, I don't know. Like, this is this right. a little bit of the overlap. There's a little bit of gray area. Yeah. The reason these, these generations are broken down this way is that there are common characteristics in this block of people that are around the same 12 to 15 Common characteristics years. are shared events. Yes, yeah, shared so events So obviously, you know, you look at 1945, what's going on in world history. Yeah. During that time, exactly, and you look at things like World War II being that watershed mm -hmm. moment yep. uh, for for an entire generation, mm -hmm. and so yeah, so that's that's kind of how these things work. And like you said, everyone has a different list. They they move these dates, the dates move yeah. two or three years mm -hmm. left or right, depending on who's but categorizing. They're, they're those. generally the same, yeah, and they cover a sort of a same block of people because we can identify characteristics in those groups of people based on the common Correct. events that they've experienced. Correct. So builders are before 1945. Yep. And then the boomers were born 1945 to 1964. So these are the children of the builders. And uh, they were born in the 40s, 50s, early 60s. Mm -hmm. um, and they were the largest generation in our country up until recently. Correct. Uh, there were 76, 77 million, I think, something like that. Uh, baby boomers after the World War, after World War II, there was a ba literally a baby boom that took place, and there were all these children born in our country. Yep. And so they were up Hence until recently. the name. Baby boomers. Yeah, someone in the government coined that phrase on yeah. accident, really. Um, and so they became the, the next group uh, for over that about 20-year span, 18 years or so. Um, and then after this 1964, you have our generation, the, the best, generation. the best, the greatest Gen X, Gen X, uh, born 1965 to 1983. So you see some numbers between 1980, 83, but somewhere in that range, these are the children of the late sixties, seventies and early eighties. Um, this is a much smaller generation, almost half the size of the baby boomers. About 45, 46 million Gen Xers were born in those years. So there was a steep decline in the number of children born during that time. Um, and we'll talk more about Gen Xers in the future, but we were uh, we were labeled as slackers and a lot of other things. Yeah, that were they said negative. some mean things about they us. They really did, but we rose above it. Yeah. Yes, we did. And then we move on to the millennials. Um, these are the uh, those that were born between 1984 and 1998. Uh, so these would be children of the oldest Gen Xers yep. and some late baby boomers, the youngest mm -hmm. baby boomers. Yeah. Um, they were born in the in the 80s and 90s. And we've heard a lot about millennials. There's a bunch of them out there, a lot more than Gen Xers. Yeah, this is where you started getting like actual books being written yes. to address some of the rapid changes in generations, yeah. really with millennials. Absolutely. Not a lot about Gen Xers, mm -hmm. you know, the occasional article here and there. But like they actually have people really dedicating a yeah. lot of time and research. We see it first with millennials. Absolutely, because they were a there was a bunch of them. Yes, and they were growing up in the age of the rise of the internet. Now they were not children of the internet like the Gen like like the Gen Zers are, but they were growing up in a world that was experiencing global communication on right. a whole new level. And they would come to Gen Z. Uh, which is the the, the current and latest um, labeled generation. And so the experts are saying the next generations may not even have labels because they change so rapidly. But Gen Z was born between 99 and 2015, which right. brings them right up to the last six years or so. Yeah. And they are the children of the internet. They've grown up in a world that has never that has that has never not had internet access and global exactly. Yeah. And just for, just for clarification, uh, as we've gone through these, I hope you realize that Gen Z they're not synonymous with millennials. Sometimes people make that mistake thinking that millennials are still your college students and your teenagers. Nope. No, you're, you're millennials. The millennials, I think the oldest, the youngest will be about 25 the, right now. Yeah. The oldest millennials just turned 40 this year. Yeah. They hit 40 this year. So they have kids and they've been in the workforce in some cases, almost 20 years. And so when we talk about Gen Z, uh, we are not talking about millennials. Mm -hmm. In fact, as we kind of get into these discussions, what you'll see is that these two generations could not be further apart. They don't like each other either. And they don't like each other. In fact, they are, the rift between these two generations is fodder for yeah. uh, some pretty hilarious stuff on the internet. And it, it's, and it's, it's fueled by the internet. 
it, it really is, is. And that's why other generations never had these kind of right. feuds is because there wasn't a a global that's exactly right. square where you could have all these little if you, petty arguments. If you had the kind of internet you had today when we were yeah, growing it up, been the same thing, it would have yeah. been the exact yeah. same thing yeah. because they would have used it against us and mm -hmm. we would have retaliated yeah. in the like. Exactly. And so this is, yeah, this is partly what it is. But Gen Z, with the access to technology, mm -hmm. they are unique yeah. in western civilization mm -hmm. and particularly in our own nation's history mm -hmm. because, because of what they have experienced and what they do mm -hmm. like there are things that just their very existence has made radical alterations mm -hmm. in certain aspects of our culture our economy mm -hmm. and they've not really tried to make those changes right. it's just been the product of the situation, the circumstances that they've been born into yeah, exactly. and how that's influenced their decision-making. And so this is not just another, oh, let's break down a generation. Mm -hmm. They're really not much different than we are. Gen right. Z is, is a very strategically mm -hmm. important generation for us to understand Absolutely. because it helps us to begin to make sense of what this interconnected world we live in mm -hmm. because of the technology what it does to people yeah, and the impact that that has on the rest of us. Yeah. And, you know, we thought millennials were a big generation. Yeah. Uh, Gen Xers, we, we did not have as many people as the mm -hmm. boomers. Mm -hmm. Millennials came along and people were like, wow, there are millennials everywhere. They were the biggest generation. Some even wondered would a generation come along that would be any bigger than the millennials. There's more Gen Z. And then Gen Z came along and there are way more of them mm -hmm. than Millennials. Yeah. So they are hands down our largest generation ever. Yeah. If you, if here you in America, if you put millennials and Gen Z together, they make up over 50% of our country's population. Yes. So just think about this for a moment that over half, like 52, 53% of our nation's population is under the age of 40. Now yeah. there's good and bad to that. That's good that there's a future for our nation that we have people that are going to be inhabiting this land, hopefully in this country for a very long time. Now what they do with it is it's a different story, yeah. but there are a bunch of them out there. And as, as those who work in the church, this is the future of the church. We cannot ignore the reality that there are a hundred and something million young people in our country all around us that are going to need a church home and they don't even know it. And we're going to talk more about the aspects of religion and faith in this particular generation. But when you think about it from a, just an experiential standpoint, if you were born in 1999, yeah. What has your life been like? When you were two years old, 9-11 happened. We were attacked on September 11th, right? Yeah. Now you were two, but your entire life you've grown up in a world fighting terrorism, a country especially yeah. fighting terrorism. All you've overseas. ever known is you have to take your shoes off at the airport yes, and you yes. have probably no real idea why. Exactly. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't remember those days. You've seen video footage when wherever, if you, if you were, um, if you were around, like, for instance, when we, when we were in junior high and the first Gulf War was taking place, yeah. the footage we were watching was old footage. It was hours or days old that we yeah. were watching of the war. I remember in 2003, we went to Iraq, we were watching live footage of right. tanks rolling into our, to, to, uh, to Iraq. Yeah. So millennia, I mean, uh, Gen Zers have grown up in a world with this immediate access to the events taking place in real time. Yeah. It has shaped them in significant ways. And largely ways. unfiltered. A, unfiltered, yeah. There was no someone telling them what's happening. They're watching it as it's happening. No one commentating or editing the video, right? You've been through two major recessions, economic recessions. You, you have seen nothing but political turmoil and infighting your entire life. So if you wonder why young people today may seem a little jaded or a little cynical about the world they live in part of it a large part of it is because of the culture they've observed and been part of that was not their creation whenever you want to blame a younger generation for the problems of our society we have to be very careful to understand they're using they're they, they are utilizing what they were given right right we inherit what we have from the people that came before us right and so in some ways, millennials, in, 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 in some sense, but Gen Z in particular, 
have inherited this world, and it's shaped them in some significant ways. And so we can't look at them and say, that's wrong or that's unheard of, as Jerry's mom would say. It may be unheard of for us, not for them. And it's no. important for us to understand that important distinction so that we can reach them, minister to them, disciple them, and help them walk through this season of their life. Yeah, because this is a whole different animal yeah. than what we're used to. Uh, and, you know, Oren mentioned just a few minutes ago that the generation after Gen Z might not even get a label yeah. because there is the thought among uh, many who think on these things that there may be such rapid cultural turnover mm -hmm. that you might not be able to label an entire generation. In fact, you may just have to like start breaking it down in the five year increments yeah. because things can change so rapidly. And I know for some of you, you can, you can kind of see that for others that may be a bit of a, you know, a tall tale you're thinking, mm -hmm. but just think about how much things have changed over the past 12, 13, 14 months yeah. with COVID, yeah. you know, Life is very different than what it was before, and those changes are going to continue to happen mm -hmm. as we have uh, the the fallout mm -hmm. con uh, continue from this pandemic. And and COVID may likely be the event that labels the next generation behind yeah. Gen Z because they're going to be growing up in a world post COVID. Right, they won't know a world that didn't have this exactly this experience. So that may be part of the shaping of that of that group too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's let's kind of um, let's kind of do a little something. In case you're wondering. Well, what is it like to be uh, Gen Z? Yeah. You know, some of you know, just based on what we've already shared about generations and the dates, you know you're not a Gen Z. No. But we want to do a little quiz. How Gen Z are you? How Gen Z are <laughs> you? How, how well do you relate? Yeah. And so we have, we've got, I think, 15 questions here. Yeah. That uh, we're going to ask. And I want you to just think through these, okay? Mm -hmm. Some of these are specifically indicating that you are like Gen Z. Yeah. Some of these are going to indicate that you are not at all like Gen Z. Yes. Okay. And so we'll, we'll do the quiz and then we'll kind of like break down uh, some of these in case mm -hmm. you're wondering mm -hmm. uh, which ones were specifically about yep. Gen Z, and which ones uh, were some that kind of described mm -hmm. other generations. Mm -hmm. And some of this stuff we will dive deeper into the next couple of episodes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, All right. let's, let's go for it. First question in the past 24 hours, did you spend at least an hour texting on a cell phone? Again, total, not like one hour at one time, but, but hour in, within 24 yeah, hours, cumulative time texting on a cell phone. No, me, me neither. No. Um, if you're Gen Z, probably you better believe you most likely have. Yep. Would would texting include social media as well? Would that be included? You know, I'm going to think again. It just says texting, but I'm going to assume that that would also include messaging. Yeah, Not necessarily like posting on social media, right? right. But the back and forth yep. texting like communication yep. through SMS or uh, programs like. Um, FaceTime. Yeah, probably FaceTime, yeah. Facebook Messenger, mm -hmm. WhatsApp, other things like that. Yeah, it wouldn't be unheard of to have someone on Facebook Messenger or on FaceTime while they're posting on Instagram, writing messages to different people. Very correct. So to say that an hour of texting on a phone or communicating on a phone through, not not through spoken words, but through written typed words, an hour for a Gen Zer is, is, is a walk in the park. It is. It's an easy day. Just on texting. We'll get into this uh, maybe next episode, but you know, they're not even using a whole lot of words. No. Lots of emojis as well. A lot of abbreviations. Very, very yeah. visual. Yeah. Next question. Do you have a Snapchat account? No. No, I don't either. <laughs> I don't want a Snapchat account. It terrifies me. Yeah, but the Snapchat is huge for Gen Z for a lot of reasons. Again, we'll get into those um Next Part, episode. Partly because their parents and grandparents don't have Snapchat. That's right. It's, uh, they don't have it. And it, it, um, there's, there's a whole disappearing element. That's exactly right. To that. So we'll talk about that later, uh, more detail. So third question, do you consider yourself a religious person? Yes. Yeah, I would too. Mm -hmm. I would hope so. Um, but for Gen Zers, no. not so much. They would 
tend to shy away from being identified as religious, any religion for that matter. Or they would give a lot of qualifications for they, their religious stance. Correct. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Did you get your driver's license by the time you turned 17? Absolutely. You better believe it. The and day on my 15th to birthday. bad Louisiana law, we got ours way before yes, 17. 15 years old, on my 15th birthday, I was in the DMV getting my license. So driver's license for Gen Z, no big deal. not that big a deal. Mm-hmm. Especially Makes, if you live in a city. Yes. Like Baton Rouge, yeah. Yep. 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 Do you think same-sex same marriage should be legal? No. No. <laughs> they do. Many Gen Zers. Many of them do, yes. Many Gen Zers look at same-sex marriage through a different lens yep. than previous generations. Yep. All right, next questions. Did you ever drink alcohol, meaning more than just a few sips, by the time you turned 16? No. No, because we're just... <laughs> we're good Baptist kids. We're good Baptist kids. <laughs> but for many of our peers, yeah. uh, was alcohol, alcohol was, was very much... Uh, for some, a ride of passage. A ride of passage, yeah. And very recreational. So you pass a good time in South Louisiana. Oh, in the, yeah. In, in the, uh, on the Friday night, yeah. That's it. Yeah. But for Gen Zers, they have actually seen a sharp decrease mm-hmm. in alcohol consumption mm-hmm. and drug use, that, for that matter. The idea of a party scene, like we hear party scene, you and I would know what that is. Right. Because there were enough movies and television shows. John Hughes. Features. Told us what that yeah, was like, exactly. right? John Hughes, all the movies <laughs> in the '90s that featured young people having parties, wild, that's we crazy, knew. big Absolutely. house parties, parents away. Yeah, that's that with Gen Z. That's a it's a different perspective now. They don't believe those same things that we did. Yeah. Yep. All right. Next question: Did you fight with your parents a lot when you were a teen? I didn't, but I. I know a lot of people who did. Yeah. And I probably could have had I tried, tried a little harder. <laughs> but it's just, you just didn't make yeah, the effort. It was very, like, it was kind of common to know, to hear stories of teenagers just fighting with their parents all the time. Right. Yeah. That was kind of like the thing you did. Yeah. Yeah. All up. teenagers are going to have disagreements yeah. with their parents. And, you know, you're at that age where you're mm-hmm. trying to find your identity and assert some level of independence. And so it's, mm-hmm. it's common to have some of that. And of course there are some cases where the, you know, the relationships are you know pretty toxic yeah. and uh, it's, it's big time, but, but, but even to go back to like, we talked about movies yeah. a moment ago, those movies from the eighties and nineties all like, the, and I'm, I'm referencing that cause that's what we grew up in. Dave and I mm-hmm. always had that, that, I roll towards your parents kind of relationship. Yes. Oh, mom. Oh, dad. Like you right. don't understand. Because they were the boomers. They were the boomers. Yeah. Right. And they were they were out of touch. They were out of style. Yep. And so the, the teenagers featured in that in that era always looked sort of down upon the people ahead of them in age. Yeah. Gen Z doesn't don't look at their parents in the same way. I think there's something a little different about the relationships that that Gen Zers have with their their parents. Yeah. So moving on, were more than one third of the other students at your high school a different race than you? In my high school, I would say yes. Not mine, buddy. We were. (laughs) Not in Livingston Parish. Yeah. Uh, I think our high school was, you know, 55% white, 45% black, probably. That's probably the way it would have broken down. It was a little bit closer. Um, Uh when I was in school there, but that the, the case now in most high schools, yeah. they are so diverse ethnically, racially, culturally mm-hmm. that a young person growing up today, uh, visiting a school where everybody was the same color seems like a, um, a, a, a feature of a, of a bygone era. Um, Gen Zers are growing up in the most racially diverse uh, era in American history. Mm-hmm. And that they yeah. have more friends who are of different ethnic backgrounds than any generation before them. Like if you had a person of a different ethnic background when we were growing up or our parents were growing up, that was like one friend. That's not the case anymore. And so in some ways that's a good thing, uh, but it's also been difficult for older generations to embrace that in their yes. children and grandchildren's lives because it's so distinctly different from what they grew up with themselves. Yes, very much so. Speaking of high school, yeah, when you were in high school, 
Did you spend nearly every weekend night out with your friends? Uh, probably. Yeah. Doing something. Yeah. 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 Hanging out some, not every weekend night no. for me, but I play basketball. So Friday yes. nights were ball games, but, other, but right. Saturday nights we were just doing something with our friends. Yeah. yeah. If it wasn't at church, it was with someone else. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Gen Z, not, not so, much. so much. Usually at home, typically on a screen of chatting, of chatting with friends, four or five of them at a time, possibly having different yeah. conversations with different yeah. people. Yeah, sure. Yep. All right. Did you have a job during the, the school year when you were in high school? Uh, a little bit, rarely. I played sports in high school, and the agreement I had with my parents is if I kept my grades up, I played sports. I didn't have to, I didn't have to work. But when I wasn't playing sports, I was usually doing something, some some form of, of employment of some degree, yes. Yeah, I didn't have, like, a standing job, mm -hmm. like, during the school year because yeah. I cut grass. Yep. And so I cut grass when grass needed to be cut, which is a long time <laughs> in Louisiana. That's right. But it wasn't like, you know, I went down to McDonald's and worked a shift or right. whatever. Right, 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 right. Did you have a job? Oh, I just wrote that one. Sorry. Let me catch up with where I am. Do you agree that safe spaces and trigger warnings are good ideas and that efforts should be made to reduce microaggressions? Huh? Uh, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. What's a for, safe space? For most generations that are not Gen Z, there's just like a lot of question marks over a lot of the words that were used in that sentence yeah a safe space trigger warning and a microaggression, microaggression. those words didn't exist <laughs> when we were growing up the, and if they did we wouldn't have had any idea what they right. were like a safe space was like that's where you a went when a, when, a, when a tornado yeah, was coming yeah it's in your tub with a mattress over that's here exactly right. safe space. like that's you know a trigger warning like that's on guns maybe i don't right like, we don't we wouldn't have had any idea what this means and the reason i know this now is because it's in the news so much yeah but gen z knows and we don't want to make light of this because this is a really it is serious issue for is. many in gen z yeah i'm not making fun of it i'm just saying from it's, my perspective it's very foreign it's very foreign to it me really i would is. not have known what these it's words like mean. eating dinner at 4 30 in the <laughs> afternoon it's unheard of. <laughs> all right next question are you a political independent officially yes i am registered independent <laughs> <laughs> But probably not for the same reasons that Gen Z is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mentioned that earlier that the age that they grew, they've grown up in, all they've really seen is political turmoil. Right. Infighting, corruption, lying, straight up lying to the camera, right? And then mm -hmm. apologizing that people didn't understand. Like, this is what they've lived with their entire lives. So you understand why they don't want to be associated with a political party because they and we'll talk more about authority in the coming weeks and their distrust of authority because they feel like everybody's lying to them and so they don't trust political parties and i guess i don't either <laughs> <laughs> maybe not for the same reasons not that, but not uh, no not not for the same reasons no all right next question do you support the legalization of marijuana i do not i do not either but many in gen z would not see a big problem with no that, problem, and that yeah. That even goes back into some of the thinking that uh, brings them to the conclusion that same-sex same, same sex marriage mm. uh, should also be yep. legalized. Yep. All right, next question. Is having sex without much emotion involved mm. desirable? No. Yeah, no. Most generations would answer yeah. no. Yeah. But we're seeing a new thought process on sex among Gen Z that is increasingly removing Yep. The whole concept of there being any emotional attachment between partners. Yep. So the the boomer generation introduced what we would call recreational drug use in the 60s and right. 70s that we inherited from them in our generation. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're seeing now is recreational sex lives, yeah. where it's just strictly something you do with whoever, um, usually a friend. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. There's no yeah. emotional attachment to it, and it's a very dangerous practice. Yeah. Right. So last question on our little quiz here. When you were in high school, did you feel left out and lonely fairly often? Um, not really. I can't say that I felt left out and lonely very often, maybe every once in a while. Yeah. But um, I would say no, gen generally. Generally speaking, yeah, you do have uh, bouts, you know, in previous generations where loneliness, feeling left out, that's 
a common occurrence. Yeah. But with Gen Z, it's almost an epidemic. Yeah. And so loneliness has just gone through the roof mm -hmm. as far as being something that this generation experiences on a regular basis. I mean, the numbers are really alarming Staggering, yeah, when, you, when you look at it. Yeah. And so, you know, we want to kind of throw this out just to give a little bit more perspective mm -hmm. on Gen Z, mm -hmm. because as we get into this discussion more, we really kind of want you to have a picture in your mind mm -hmm. of who these young people are. And one of the things we want to do is we want to make sure that as you think of them, you're just not thinking negatively about right, them. Right. We don't want you to be throwing them on the bus. Uh, you know, I can remember, you know, going to trainings, conferences where there were entire breakout sessions on basically how to work with a millennial without killing them. Yeah. It was very negative. Mm -hmm. They they were talked horribly about mm -hmm. in those sessions. Mm -hmm. And it was basically a survival guide. Yeah, for leaders, yeah. For leaders. Yeah. And that was very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And so we are, we're not going to take that mindset no, with no. Gen Z. And we shouldn't have taken it with millennials. So we, we really want to be encouraging yeah. about this generation. But we also want to paint a real picture mm -hmm. of what life is like for them. So we have thrown out a few things that you may go, goodness gracious, I don't think I like that at all. Yeah. Well, what are some of the things, Orrin, that we can mention that are positive about Gen Z, things that make us hopeful for this generation. So I was thinking about, you know, the, 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 the loneliness perspective we talked about and the time they spend in isolation with one another or from, from one another, it doesn't mean that they're not, they're just sitting by themselves talking to themselves. They're usually like you mentioned before on a screen in some ways. Yes. So that there is some bad stuff involved with that for sure, mm -hmm. but they're, they are not afraid of digital connections with people. And that is, whether you like it or not, the future of everything. Yes. The world is moving in that direction. And there's no stopping it anytime soon. If it stops, it's going to require some cataclysm of some, you know, <laughs> apocalyptic proportions. Yeah. But um, an unmitigated disaster. An unmitigated <laughs> disaster. <laughs> but, it's our new tagline. Yeah, it's our tagline. But if, if, if nothing really changes in that field, they are going to be the most prepared to lead with technology in the next 25 years yes because they will have grown they will have been born into it mm -hmm. they will it will not be foreign to them i you and i still stumble over technology that's a fact yesterday afternoon and thursday afternoon we spent all oh, this time trying to get audio gracious. and video set up yeah. to do a live stream where a young person may have come in there and got it done in 15 minutes yeah it took us three hours because we just don't know what we're doing yep they understand i think for the for the sake of the church and for the home i would say take those two perspectives the ability to communicate digitally is going to be vitally important. They are not going to be afraid of it. They're not going no. to bumble and fumble through it. It's going to be like second nature to them, like speaking a second language. And I think that's going to serve them well going forward, particularly those that have been discipled well and have a healthy uh, mentality about life and perspective. As they mature, they're going to leverage that comfort they have with technology for really good things. So I'm very high on that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do with it. Yeah, one of the things that really encouraged me about Gen Z is that it's their drive. Mm -hmm. Um, the millennials were typically very passionate about certain causes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they kind of ushered in this whole hashtag mentality where, you know, you have this cause, you get all gung ho about it, mm -hmm. but it, your passion really is more poured into, um, social media, social media. It's called slacktivism. Slacktivism. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There's they were active, but it was kind of distant through social yeah. media. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're, Gen Zers, they're more boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. They like to get their hands dirty. Uh, they like to think through and generate creative solutions to problems. Mm -hmm. And so I really like that about Gen Z. They just don't look at something and go, wham, wham, this is terrible. They're usually saying, hey, there's a problem, and I've got an idea about that. Yeah. Right? They yeah. usually have a solution that they're wanting to, to explore. Mm -hmm. Now, 
one thing that Gen Z needs, they need perspective yeah. and wisdom, yeah. which they lack just because of their age. But that drive, I think, is one going to be those, one of those valuable assets for them moving forward. Who knows? I mean, look, we gave the world Google yeah. and Amazon and Run DMC. Run DMC, <laughs> we did. <laughs> <laughs> That's a positive thing. It is, I yeah. think. Yeah. Right? SpaceX. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, think about what this generation is going to do yeah. with the drive that they have. Like we had to wait until we were like older. Like mm-hmm. our generation had to kind of like come of age yeah. to do some of these things. Mm-hmm. Gen Z is doing stuff now yeah. that blows my mind. Whatever technology we invented they are mastering at a young age and, yeah. and excelling well beyond that. Oh yeah. And, and so we cannot look and look, we can do the same thing with millennials. Millennials are creative. They have a lot of expression. Yes. They are going to lead our country. They're going to lead our homes, our churches, our businesses. Our nation will be led by millennials and Gen Zers in the future. Yeah. And so we can't just stick our head in the sand and go, you guys don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. We'll have to wait for the next ones to come along. No, you don't get to do that. You got you got to work with, with 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 what you have, and so you look for all these positive elements in the generations to go. How can we leverage that for good in our world? Gen Z has some features and and characteristics in their generation that I think God can use and the church can use for sure to uh, see some real change happen in society. That's yeah. going to be good and beneficial for everyone. Yeah, without a doubt. Agree. All right. So as we get into this conversation, we've done the, the little intro here, but for those of you that like to take a deep dive with us. We want to make some book recommendations yep, yep. because Orn and I read a lot and we have been reading a lot on Gen Z yeah. and we've got a nice little stack of books here next to us that we want to throw out there yep. and we'll, we'll put these in the show notes uh, eventually <laughs> so that you can have that list uh, to look through. So Orn, what, what do we have up first? All right. So first up we, uh, we, we referenced the Barner group who does a lot of, of social research on groups and generations um and and um a lot a lot in society it's, it's, it's not just about generations but there are two resources that we pull together are they that they, they, they pull together that we got from them um on gen z there's two books here uh this is book one this is book two um and this is talking about their culture their beliefs uh, what motivates and shapes them um uh, how they care for others and how we care for them their souls how do we cultivate resilience in the yes. in, in as disciples and followers of Jesus. And so those are concerns of ours as, as a church for sure. And so these two resources are really good um, for anybody that wants a lot of data. This is data. This is charts and graphs and stats, but also it's some, pretty. It's, it's really it's done beautiful, well, but it's also it's some great so wisdom, some yes. great wisdom in here of people that have done all the hard work, the sociological work right. of hearing from Gen Z about how they think and how they feel. And then it's been compiled here, so it gives us a framework to work within to know sort of how how to reach them, how to disciple them, how to help them, how to walk with them through this journey that that, that they're on. Very very good resource. All right, so got? I've got a book here that is written outside the church context that is taking a, a look at this generation, mm-hmm. and it's by a researcher, and look, I've heard her name pronounced like three or four different ways. Mm -hmm. So sorry, Gene, but Gene Twenge, um, who is, uh, has a PhD. And I want to say, how does she have it in the end? I I knew that for a second and I just thought about it. Uh, I lost it. Where is it? PhD. She is a professor of psychology at San Diego state university. And, uh, she did a research project on this generation. She calls them iGen because, um, of the iPhone, the influence mm-hmm. of the yeah. iPhone is just sort of iconic when we yeah. talk about technology. So she calls them IGN, and it's called Why Today's Super Connected Kids Are Growing Up Less Rebellious, More Tolerant, Less Happy, and Completely Unprepared for Adulthood. Mm. And so it is, it's a really good read. Um, it can be a bit academic in places, but uh, she's got some solid research and a lot of authors writing about Gen Z lean into her in yep. this book, IGN, yep. uh, that she put out just just a few years ago. I think it's two years old, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, excellent book. All right. Uh, the next one we have, this is a big one. This is a book uh, by Tim Elmore. 
who's written a bunch of books on leadership. He's from the um, the John Maxwell School of Leadership. Essentially, mm-hmm. he was kind of one of John Ma- Maxwell's earliest uh, followers and disciples, if you will. Um, he wrote a book a couple years ago called Generation Z Unfiltered, and the tagline is this: "Facing nine hidden challenges." of the most anxious population and we're going to get into this over the next couple of weeks about the the stress level and the anxiety that gen zers are feeling these days and so what tim elmore does in this book is he breaks down nine challenges but he also presents solutions to those challenges throughout this book and so some of these things are are um are fantastic when it comes to understanding how gen zers think and then what we can do about it and so for instance a, 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 an, an example of challenge one is empowerment without wisdom right so a gen zer may feel empowered to make change in the world yeah but they have they don't have the wisdom they need to do it the right way and so one of the ways that we help them is to give them experience so that they can gain wisdom in their experiences so that when they start applying these changes in their lives or to, to society as a whole, they are they're, they're, there's a better path in, in, in front of them. So these nine challenges are really good. We're going to pull some of this and just talk about it as we go through this discussion. Tim Elmore, Gen Z Unfiltered. You got one more. One more. This is one Dave and I read together, bookmark, last year called Meet Generation Z by James Emery White. Uh, James White is a uh, pastor. Uh, he's the founding pastor of Mecklenburg Community Church um, in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, this is a church that has gone through a lot of transition and transformation in order to reach this generation, this younger generation. And there are some uh, pretty incredible things in here that that James White addresses. Um, and it's, it's not a formula for your church by any stretch. It's principles that we have to understand so that we can, we can not only know who Gen Z is, mm-hmm. but what it's going to take for us to reach them and to help them. And so this is a fantastic book, Meet Generation Z, Understanding and Reaching the New Post-Christian World. So we encourage you to pick those up. They will be great benefit to your life. All right, with me, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Next episode, we're going to discuss the world of Gen Z. Yeah. And so we're going to get into a lot of stuff. We'll, we'll try to behave ourselves and not go completely overboard because mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot that we can yes. throw out there. But we're yes. going to take some key things, and we're just going to kind of paint a picture yep. of the world that they live in as they perceive it yeah. and, and how it interacts with them mm-hmm. and they with it. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be a great episode. So you want to make sure that you tune in for that. And one of the best ways to know when our episodes are coming up is like, like subscribe, share, subscribe. Yes. So if you have an iTunes account, go on iTunes, find foot notable, give us a five star rating and review that lets other people find mm-hmm. wonderful content for example, on Gen Z so that they can listen in as well. And then we are on Facebook at facebook.com slash footnotable podcast. Mm -hmm. You can find us on Instagram at footnotable. And of course on YouTube, Mm -hmm. just search footnotable. We are the only channel named footnotable. Footnotable. Only ones. That's where we're unique set apart distinct that's us find us tell us about us uh we hope to help y'all thank you for joining us today all right